Aside from the fact that the screen's bobbing up and down, I'm not sure why it's I'm not sure why it's doing that. That's a bit too loud. I'm gonna turn it down a bit more. Anything sounds slightly off to you. <laughs> My god, this is how I used to have to play Sonic games when I was a kid. Oh, you just wait, right? In Act 2, I get speed shoes. Yeah, it's it's pretty special. Um, thankfully, in uh, Sonic 2 onwards, the the music is um, remains unchanged. The gameplay is still slower. Oh yeah, Saz, it's it's something else. <laughs> so if you have speed shoes on, the music sounds normal again. <laughs> so yeah, that was the first that was the first mistake, if you like. I'm a whole two seconds behind, what am I gonna do? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the in-game timer... Oh no, sorry, the in-game timer runs at 60 hertz still, so each second is 1.2 seconds. Like, what I mean to say by that is the, um... The... Timer advances every 60 frames. But I mean, this fe like this the speed of it feels so much slower than you know only what would it be sixteen percent slower. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Marble sounds even more sad. Oh, it does. It's so sad. You know what else is sad? Not making that jump. <laughs> that jump, though. Uh, that's not true, Saz. It actually did support PAL-60. I just couldn't record it. The one that didn't support PAL-60 was GEMS. Obviously now this is where the roots diverge in a big way. Um, 108 even by glitchless standards is not that great.
Uh, yeah, Saz. I know it doesn't make sense, but... Yeah. Oh wow, I got good platform luck. That never happens. Oh wow, I, I was mildly competent even then. I say right as I run into a caterpillar. There should have been like a uh, slow shoes that slowed the speed down as well as the game. I know that uh, Sonic 3 competition mode actually had those, had those, but I don't think it slowed the music down. Uh, 115. So I mean, I'm looking at these times and going, I wasn't actually playing super badly. Anyway, Shadow B, have you tried doing a damage boost with no rings? It doesn't end well. Hey, Star Kratos. I probably still thought that was the strangest thing ever at the time. Mind you, this is slow enough on NTSC. In PAL, that is friggin' torture. <laughs> I used to have a lot of trouble making that jump, that's why I would just bounce off the life. <laughs> Pal speedruns is basically an oxymoron at this point. Ah uh, yeah, Star Crytest, to my knowledge, this is the oldest Sonic 1 speedrun that exists, that video exists for. One thirty. That's actually not a bad time. Even now when I do a glitch, I get like 125. Yeah, memory and experience is the right word. <laughs> the thing that really makes me go thinking emoji is the fact that I actually had to play it like this back in the day. Ah, back when everyone used to try and make that clean. <laughs> Dude, Shentok, it was the best. Oh wow, that was <laughs> that was incredibly lucky that.
Because now we have the method to jump up against the um, the spring. It'll be interesting to see what the first run that uses that is. Hey, Twitch Master. Just taking a stroll down memory lane. <laughs> that whole thing there happened so slow that I was able to see that that jump was wrong and save it. Oh wow, so I must have, yeah. So I wasn't even doing that. Wow, I was being super safe here. Shadows, I think it looks wor I think it looks worse than it is because of the music. I think the music is slowed down more than 16%. But I, I can see the um the video time and it's definitely playing at one second per second. <laughs> hey Motsuni! Wow, that was a lucky jump. <laughs> yeah, you'll see when I get around to um, Sonic 3 and Knuckles eventually. Uh, that the Sonic 3 and Knuckles music doesn't change. It plays at the correct speed. What's that, 128? That was pretty bad. I got... I got stopped by a slope right near the end. I don't think I'd ever seen that before at the time. So that was a little unfortunate, but... At that point I felt, you know, I'm going pretty well. So I'll just carry it on. <laughs> wow, okay. Handled that a little bit differently back then. Oh, that, that breaking the water sound, that's so bad. Hmm. This is back before I realized you could jump around the spikes. Also, no effort to, um, you know, take the risk with that jump. Uh, yeah, you'll hear it in Lab 3, I think. Although I'm pretty sure I handled that slightly differently as well. Oh, too quick. Jeez, 59. <laughs> that stage was pretty bad. Hey, Vorpal. That, that, that must mean I'm doing it right. So this back in the day was before we did any of the glitches, so... 
I gotta play through the whole second half of this stage normally too. <laughs> hey Claris, yeah, just be glad you didn't have to experience this. Of course, we didn't know any better at the time. Uh, about speedrunning the same game for several years. Um, I don't know that feels strange. I think this kind of rubs it in for me, just how different the game is now to what it was. So it's almost like playing a different game in the sense that you play it so differently. So yeah, don't worry, you'll get to hear the even more terrifying drowning music. Once again. Let's see how I handled this. Okay. That was my old method. Really, it feels slower than that. So aside from getting the um, the air bubble from a different place. This stage actually went pretty well. And even then I was doing the jump past the the arrows like that. 137. That's That's competent. Yeah, I only lost 8 seconds against my current PB. Yeah, you know what? I'll pay that. This this stage actually sounds pretty cool. Um short answer final flame, mostly disbelief. See, at the time we didn't even have the conception of these glitches that could completely change the game. Now this was just um, played on the PAL Sonic Mega Collection.
26 there isn't bad. In fact, I, I still don't get that myself half the time. Uh, yeah, for games of this vintage, native pal is always slower. How did I handle this before? Oh, I just got really lucky, okay. <laughs> I think what I used to do was like hold left just as I was going down. <laughs> and I jumped into that before the invincibility kicked in. Whoops. Uh, pineapple 1455. Uh, yeah, Saz, this, this video is actually um, 352 by 288 rather than the usual 320 by 240. That, actually, going past that wall like that almost never happens. Hmm, I wonder what I was thinking here. <laughs> took its time. It'll be interesting to see when good strategies for that start to emerge. <laughs> it's also like I realize, shit, I'm on really good pace, don't throw this away. So the opening there is slightly slower and that actually costs a, quite a bit of time here. But, oh no, I don't have this method yet. So what you can do is you can jump on the two 10 ring boxes in the pit and just make it up to that higher one. Um, I wonder if that's... I wonder if Stansky does that. <laughs> and I tried to jump onto... That was the biggest mistake in the run. I tried to jump into something that wasn't out. Frame perfect jump off that first red platform, by the way. I didn't even go the top way. Like, even without the glitches, the top way is still significantly faster. Oh, I did too. What was it? One oh three? Okay. <laughs> 
Some of the ways I handled these areas are really interesting to me. Oh, now I've got no rings. That's cool. So I gotta sit and wait behind this bomb. Oh my god. One thirteen. Wow. Oh yeah, you've got to move, that's right. <laughs> so, back to doing this glitchless. Still had that method to bounce halfway up the the thing though. <laughs> wow, okay, so I also clearly didn't know the pattern. Yeah, start. You'll see all the newer ones do a do a known pattern. Oh wow, and I miss a hit too. <laughs> Yeah, Shadows, by virtue of having no competition whatsoever. <laughs> Welcome to the good old days. Alright. So the next one in the playlist, the first run that beat mine, was by a fellow you're all familiar with. The legendary Joe Stansky. So we move on. Okay, and now... The, uh, the size of the video is actually different because NTSC. So now we've got to... Um, I've got to try and get the window size right. And with any luck, it should remain the same for the rest of the the rest of the videos. Okay, hang on a sec. I'm gonna cut off the sides a fraction so it fits in the space. Okay. Um, so let's do a new run. All right. 
So, we're back in 60 hertz, and now we're going to see Sonic 1 Stansky style. So I'm unsure what was actually known at the time of this run, so um, I'm sure to be surprised a little bit. Of course, once you get to um, Clarice's run, which is next, uh, a whole heap of stuff was found then. So that run looks very different, but I'm curious as to how different this one looks. Uh, so what was that? 23. Whoops. <laughs> Okay, so we're still on the bottom route for Green Hill 3. That was a good save, actually. Oh, I didn't see what the time for that was. Anyone get it? Thirty-seven. Okay, so only mildly worse than what it should be. <laughs> wow, okay. At least I'm not the only one that made that mistake. Uh, if your emulator was set to play it at PAL speed, then yeah. One oh six, so we're still not we're still not getting good times here yet. I I think it's a fair well, okay, maybe not. I was gonna say I think it's a fair bet he probably picks up time on me here because this was one of my worst levels. <laughs> nice, JRP. Don't you just love being a moderator? Okay, we weren't doing the mod of the clip yet. I'm pretty sure there's like a sound test code you can do to set that as well, HDL. I can't remember exactly what it is. Oh, 
Oh, actually, no, that's only for Sonic 2. I've never seen that in Sonic 3. Yeah, 110. Yeah, I thought he'd pick up a few on me there. A good time for that now. Glitchless is, like, under 105. So... It's, it's not an easy stage to perform well, though. <laughs> Interesting approach to, um, to the platforms there. Oh, and this and this is only mildly less painful. This is it's still very painful. Oh, a nice bit of luck there. Wow, that's a that's a ballsy jump. <laughs> I can I can see that, Clarice, but to me the most obnoxious thing to watch in this run was the um the shenanigans at the end of the game. Another 130 there. Fair enough. Because the end game in this run is not very good. But this was back in the days where it was much more forgivable to have end game mistakes. Wow, I've never seen that jump before. Or at least I feel like I haven't seen it before. That time he tried to adjust his jump and landed short. Still we're persisting with trying to hit that gap clean. <laughs> 36, that's a bit bad. Yeah, that's what normally happens when you dash into the things like that. <laughs> Ooh, that's unfortunate. That, on the other hand, that's a good jump. Yeah, see, he wouldn't have had time to adjust that if he saw it was wrong. Uh, so we're still not doing the backwards at the start strat in Spring Yard 3. That's different. Normally when I do that jump I get um I get pushed straight onto the ground. So to see him go straight through and stay in ball form the whole way is a little bit different. <laughs> FF, please.
Nice short jump there, make, making sure he doesn't make the same mistake I did. That was a hell of a jump, actually. I thought mine was a was a good save. That one, all the platforms were far enough apart that it would have been a very easy death. One twenty-three. Didn't get hit there, good start. No way, dude. You want pizza, you're buying. <laughs> and that, that was saving a jump there the hard way. And that is the first attempt at actually trying to gain a bit of momentum to save a jump there. I, I think he was trying to roll there and just missed. Much cleaner Labyrinth 1 on the whole though, 51. That's starting to get a bit closer to modern times. Hey guys. The best part is Gear Strike. This is going to be six different Sonic 1 runs from different eras. So, you're going to learn lots of different things. About how we used to play back in the day and what it looks like now. So we still don't have Labyrinth 2 in our arsenal. Nice, nice little escape there. A 104, that's a, that's a much better Labyrinth 2 than I had. Yeah, he just got lucky there. There are small gaps between the, um, the orbs on the Orbanauts. You can just get through them. Uh, it's not really obvious how you do it, though. <laughs> okay. Let's see where he gets air. Nah, still getting air from here. I also like that approach. I think it's a little bit slower than what I did, but it's... You kind of loop around that platform and just land on the one below. That's pretty neat. Yeah, you're right. I probably should have done fresh splits. I've got... I've got some videos for... Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles lined up, so I can do something like that. It's interesting, Stansky seems a bit more scared of those, um, those arrows than I was. Because even before he lost his ring, he um, he was being much more cautious around them. So 
So 150. Starlight 1 and 2 are pretty easy, of course. So there you see he's starting to do the jumps on the downslope to speed up a bit. Yeah, JRP, some but not all of them will work. The, um, the cartridges themselves have region locks on them, not the system. I don't know why he'd hold back there, that was strange. It's also interesting he chose not to roll on that last jump, which gave him control, but I think he jumped way too early to get any use out of it. Also, that, that climb off those last two angled ramps is surprisingly difficult to keep your speed on. <laughs> it's interesting that was the the approach to to uh, getting all the speed off that ramp. We'll have to see if um we'll have to see if Clarissa's run is any different in that regard. So there, that's that's normally what happens when you try and go past that wall. It doesn't work. Yeah, the problem with this fight, and you, it, it's probably repeated in several other runs, is that once you miss your pattern, the whole thing goes to hell. One twenty-five. I think that was even worse than mine, which is somewhat impressive. Because mine was pretty bad. So he made that cycle, so that platform appeared. But then he missed that jump, so he misses the cycle coming up. So now we're waiting for 29, it should come out, there we go. The roll through that caterpillar was interesting. Oh, <laughs> that jump over the rotating platforms, that should not have worked. Alright, 50 Scrap Brain 1, that's pretty good. Okay, so we've switched to the top route now. So we're on the top route, 
And, oh, we've got no rings. That's cool. We've got to stop and get a ring there. Would have been better off getting it there. And miss the jump out of the pit. <sighs> see, as you can see, this stage could have been a lot better. Even even on this regular path. Like, it's possible to get under 50 seconds on this path. So, 110 is a bit unfortunate to be kind. And then there's this stage. Okay, so we still didn't know about that one either. I think even if we did, it wouldn't have been used in runs at the time. Wow! <laughs> This is Choke City right here. And he won't mind me saying that because he said it at the time. <laughs> at least it didn't fall in that pit. That would have been... Unmitigated disaster. 39. That is most unfortunate. Uh, so now I think that Stansky had a pattern for this. It's different to the one we use now, but I'm pretty sure if you did a jump at the start and did it as soon as it came out, you would get this pattern. In this pattern, the last four hits are really easy because you get um, one and four on all four of them. But I think the last one is a one, which means you have to delay it a little bit. But he still got himself his 113. So 1752. That was step two. Alright. Now, it must have been around this time, or a little after this, that the TASs of this game started to come out and really changed what we understood and knew was possible in the game. Because the gap here is again about a year, but... The time improves by almost three minutes. And to be clear, even if you remove all the new stuff that was found, Claris was still playing significantly better. But. As you will see. There's a lot, a lot of new stuff.
Oh yeah, so this is another Mega Collection run, so enjoy the terrible sound. <laughs> I forgot about that. I haven't seen anyone miss that roll yet. I was expecting someone to have missed it. Although it probably would have been a reset, if you did. Low 20, pretty solid. So we're still lower route for Green Hill 3. But let's see if someone can finally get a 35. Oh, that's good. No, no momentum lost there. No invincibility, but that shouldn't matter. Should still be able to... Yep. Get it done before the... The ball gets in the way. And 35 it is. And Marble 1 is rearing its ugly head again. Um, you can go ahead and blame the analog stick for that. I'll let you have that one. <laughs> so that hits intentional to go through the spike. But really, it doesn't make any difference because you're waiting for that green thing anyway. So 101, that's still an improvement. But the next cycle is at like 54 seconds. And it requires taking a hit in the lava intentionally. And... Things. It's difficult. Wow, that lava sound! <laughs> Uh, so I think that this is the first time we see the monitor clip. So, so this is the first of the significant tricks that was added to this run. And there are several others on the way. And that, that skips a good oh, 20 seconds in Marble 2. Yeah, about that. Now, I can't remember what happens in Marble 3 here. There, there was an old method to skip half of Marble 3. I wonder if we'll see that. Nope! Probably for the best. That trick is awful. Kind of similar to what you do in um, Marble One now, Marble One now, but instead you have to. <laughs> well, I suppose it doesn't matter if you get hit here. Yeah, instead, you have to zip to the left for one frame 
and then immediately back to the right in order to get enough speed. That sounds plausible. Um, <clears throat> yeah, again, again with that jump. Let's see if this strategy changes any. No. Still four hits before he goes left. I wonder who was the first to change that up. Might be in TNT's run. We'll see. Uh, 131. So all the so all the Marble 3 runs that are glitchless have stayed around that same point. So not a lot has changed there in a long period of time. Interesting different approach to um, Spring Yard 1 there. That's definitely slower, but also probably safer as well. And nobody has got that bounce right yet. That actually worked out pretty well, I think. Landing on the... landing on the 10 ring box like that. If you'd landed on the spring instead, then um, bad things would have happened. Because you basically would have got your... Oh, okay, so we're still not doing the jump there. At least you didn't get knocked into that spike pit. Uh, that that there actually is something you'll see change. <laughs> that was an interesting way to get those guys to stop in a different place. You can actually get sniped on that jump if you do that. 37? Okay, so now we're doing the turning around at the start thing. And that means that you can roll straight through this and those platforms will be just... Those spike balls will be just out of position. I don't think she makes that jump. Nope. Uh, this may also be the only run in which this route is taken. I'm not a fan of this route, personally. I don't think it saves as much time as it appears to, but it definitely saves some. So I really should learn it. Nearly walked away without the speed shoes, though. That would have been bad. It was a bit brave going, landing straight on the... And that jump was quite brave too, actually. <laughs> Every single one of those has had a close call on it. Uh, yeah, Kirby, I've only got time for Sonic 1 today. I might do... So I've got Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles runs lined up. I might, um... I might do those another day. Each of them I'll probably have to commit about three hours to. Uh, oh, I didn't enter Spring Yard 3. Shit. Anyone get the time? Okay, so now stand on edge and jumping straight. That's... Oh, there was still a bit of right to left there. Okay, and so now we're building up more momentum there. We're a bit braver on that jump. Still, nobody's getting that roll right. I 
I just want I just wonder in that situation if she actually thought she was gonna get hit anyway and just didn't bother rolling. I rem actually I remember this stage was one that Claris knew really well, so this one was quite clean. Um, there's that little stumble there, but so this this one we had in our arsenal as well. That's actually a slightly different way to the way we do it now. You'll see it in the um, in the other runs where we actually now jump to the right hand side of the. Um, the button first to make sure that we've got the momentum going left. But that that is the way we used to do it, using the wall to get as much momentum as possible. And oh, that's it. That's actually a really painful mistake. So I'd be interested to see where this ends up, and also where she gets her air. Okay, so we've now progressed to getting the air from here. Got really lucky with that bubble though. You probably die more than half the time if you um if you if you don't bring that on screen until then. So that was quite lucky. <laughs> this is also on the Japanese version, because normally there would be a big jump at the end of that second series of jumps. Everyone is getting hit by that! <laughs> and so, zero rings, little bit circumspect here. Ooh, except for there where you didn't really have a choice. I don't think it is by default Shadow B, I think you have to set it to be a particular version. Because I know it definitely has all three ROMs in it. Yeah, I, d I don't know. I don't know. There's, on there's only two things in the level design I can think of that they changed, which is adding the one ring at the top of Labyrinth 1, and that ledge in Labyrinth 3. I got no idea why. <laughs> That for some reason, if you jump from the from the top down there, that always works. Landing on that enemy and killing it. Oh, 33. Oh, I guess the start of that level was bad, more so than the end. So at the moment, I've still got the best um, Starlight too. We're still going that way in order to trigger the um, the slope, the steepest part of the slope. Yeah, I thought we would have been at the point of timing jumps by now. 
Apparently not. No luck there, although that was slightly different. Uh, taking the hit from the bomb there so that you get knocked to the right, that's a little improvement. And this might be the first run with a functioning Starlight 3 strategy. <laughs> um, very unfortunate glitch actually happened there when she was going for hit 6. If you hit the... Um, if you're about to land on the one side of the seesaw and a spike ball lands on the other just before you, um, you'll go straight through your side of the of the seesaw. So that was recovered pretty well, actually. Okay. So. Or it should still make that cycle, yep. So that didn't actually make a difference. Um, but you've lost this cycle though, so no 24. I'm now waiting for 29, there it is. Yep, that's better. Much cleaner scrap brain one. Gets about the same time as the other one, but it just looks and feels much easier. And I think scrap brain two, we now have a new method as well. So this is, I think this is the first run with the, yeah, with the door clip. Actually, Claris does the fast version of the clip there. That, um, I wasn't expecting to see that because I don't think other runners do that for years. I, I know that when I was doing it, I'd just sit there and line it up. 35 is a very good time. <laughs> it's faster than my PB, actually. Saving a bit of real time there. Okay, we're still we're not doing the um, the 11 second method, which is good because I don't think that that method is not reliable. What you had to do was clip into the wall in a certain way and then get pushed down and across to here. So most people, I think, just preferred to do it that way. And Claris did a jump, so you're probably going to see that older version of the um, of the pattern here again. So it's, I think it's one four three one four one four one. So we found out later that you didn't even need the jump. But, yeah. All things considered. We all thought at the time that this was an incredible run that wasn't going to be touched. And it was that way for a long time. <laughs> and she does decapitation just to top it all off. So because it was such a big improvement, it hit so many things. 
and didn't really leave a lot of improvement on the table. Obviously, there was some there, but because Sonic was the kind of game where it was like we were expecting, you're expecting mistakes along the way. It's one of those things you can't really, um, you can't you can't really pretend there's not going to be mistakes. It's going to happen sometimes. Um, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. This is, like, the the benchmark for new runners now. If you can beat this time, you're doing pretty well. Um, this was the, around the time where there were a lot of um, TASs being made of this game, and people were like, you know trying to claim that they'd beaten Clarissa's time, and it just wasn't the case, because they were faking their runs. Uh, oh, this one's a different size. Hang on. Let's fix that. There we go. Actually, I should be able to just do this. Nope, never mind. Yeah, don't worry, I got you covered. Um, right. So, 15.05 in the books. A whole bunch of people have tried to claim that they've beaten Clarissa's time with a TAS. Um, eventually, they were variously found out to be TASing. And... Uh, that record stood for about four years. And then this happened. Because new things were being found all the time, of course. Uh, obviously not in Green Hill. But new things were being found, and... That's, that's why these TASs were popular. Because they were the kind of tricks that were... So difficult that you'd think, oh, getting these all in one run, well, that's not going to happen, is it? So not a lot of people put the effort into it because they just figured it wasn't going to happen. So this run, TNT was known for doing um, individual level runs of the games, so we knew that he was good. I don't think up until this point we knew just how good. So this might be the first run where you see the top route in Green Hill 3. Yes, it is. Okay. Ah, but he missed it. Don't worry, you'll see that one later. So if you haven't seen it, there's a path you can take across the top. Uh, where you just bounce off enemies and then you bounce on Robotnik as he's falling. You get about seven hits before he moves to the middle. It saves about three seconds. Uh, Marble is where the run gets uh, significantly more glitchy. I can't remember if he does anything in Marble 1. 
but certainly two and probably three. Yeah, yeah, nothing here. Interesting to see what time it gets though. Because this one's been progressively improving over time. We started with 108, and then we went to 106, and then 101. It's possible. Oh, okay, so he does go for the hit there, but I think he's. He's messed it up. If I were him, I'd have picked up that ring there. Wouldn't have lost any time. So, 58 there. Still a definite improvement. So, I think I think this was the first um, real-time run to do Marble 2 and Marble 3, and yeah. So, these tricks have been known for a little while now, but they were the kind of thing, especially this one, because um, getting 11 is so simple that people just did once and they were like, oh gee, it took me ages to get that. You know, doing that in a single segment run, that's just going to be ridiculous. And I think TNT was the first one to actually consistently practice it and get to the point where, you know, I probably can do this in a run. Um, is that nine seconds? Uh, the same with this one, but again, the risk of dying is is quite strong. You have to do a jump on a specific frame after you start zipping. In that stage, I think it's like two or three frames after you start. So it's actually slightly different to the timing in Marble 1. Oh, here we go. We have, we have the new... Uh, boss method there. Uh, so 34 and 9, 43. So now we're back to doing the jump through the, the bumpers there. That jump is actually really difficult if you've done everything else in the stage well up to that point. That time TNT decides to ignore the enemy entirely. A 27 there. Okay, so now, so now starting there, you see the jump into the spring. If you jump into that spring and then hold nothing, uh, it's completely safe. You'll always bounce over the the bumper once you get to it. That's a bad miss on that jump, though. It's interesting. You didn't seem to know where the cycle was going to be there. That's unfortunate. There, there may be a snipe on here. Nah. 40. So that's a um that's a that's a risk leaving those two metal sonics alive because they can actually snipe you on that jump up to the top. Interested to see what happens here. Oh, okay. We are we are up to this spring yard three method now. Wow, that was that was super clean. 
No wonder I never thought I'd beat this run at the time. I don't think even in the runs that did beat TNT I got it that cleanly. He's missed a couple of hits on the fight though. You you notice actually that he rolled for that last hit. Where if you roll and then jump, your jump actually goes slightly higher. And a 54, that is incredible. Yeah, that that was brave too, wasn't it? Just to jump into the void. Unless he knew exactly where his cycles were at. That was a good save there too, because you'd normally bounce on all three of those. To catch it in time is... A sign that you're playing very well. You actually want to jump into that enemy so that your momentum is going down after you hit it. 48 in Labyrinth 1, that's good. He's beat me on two levels in a row. I'm struggling. That's an interesting place to get hit. We haven't seen that one yet, and you can see how it actually stops the... Um, see how the, the gate there closes. So CTNT jumps over to the right, and then back over to the left to get momentum. 35. It's a little bit slow. interesting way of handling the start there, but at least if you're rolling you know you're not going to get hit. Unless you run out of momentum of course. It's interesting, nobody does that Labyrinth 3 section the way I do. You, you'll see what I mean when I play the next run, which is mine. It's a pretty clean climb, and uh, that was nice too, actually. He's the first one not to get hit by that shot. Then he gets hit by that one instead. It's interesting that I haven't seen anyone have a clean climb yet. A 129 there is still very good. Yeah, uh, I actually think he was a little bit behind there, Shadow B, because um, I don't think he was intending to hit the boss when he did. And that messed up his momentum. And also messed up the pattern. Um, one attempt at that one there, which he doesn't get, and then moves on. Now the splits of my PB, you'll see the current world record after that. 
So 28 there. So you can see that actually loses a couple of seconds to a good um, a good Starlight one. But the alternative, if you actually land that level wrap, uh, it saves I think eight seconds. It's about as oh nine actually. It's about a 16 versus a 25. Uh, and then there's this one too. Which he doesn't go for, interestingly. Obviously decided he wasn't going to push his luck anymore. Nice little roll to sneak under the Orbanaut there. Everyone seems to struggle with the exact timing for those jumps in the curves, too. Um, so out of the four runs we've watched so far, I still have the best Starlight 2. Quite remarkably. There we go, TNT does it with a jump. Slightly different to the method that um, I use, which you'll see next. TNT also does fast Starlight 3. It's interesting that zip actually, you'll you'll see it again when we get to Tenebrae's run later. Okay, so here we have a we have a coherent plan on this boss fight. There is one more improvement you can make to it. I mean there are several more improvements you can make to it, but one more that you see in my run which comes up next. Which is trying to get um, a fifth hit as he's over on the right, using the seesaw itself. 104. So you can see the biggest the biggest jump from this run to the next one is in Marble and Starlight. That's where the most improvement is to be made. So you actually did that slightly too early. You want to delay that a little bit so that you don't hit the, so you don't get stung there. But he still managed to make the cycle, so no harm, no foul. Just straight up missed the jump, though. Very surprising. Forty-six. So this, this was the more common method of doing Scrap Brain 2. You just line yourself up with the door and then walk off the platform just as it's about to close. I do that in my run as well, I'm pretty sure. for Act 2. I'll be very interested to see what the Act 3 method is, actually. If I've done my addition right, I'm pretty sure this is the the wall clip Scrap Brain 3 method. Yeah, it is. Okay. So this is this is one of the older methods for Scrap Brain 3. Thankfully we have a much more consistent way than that now, but um, that method was 
interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, so here, I think TNT has actually messed up his pattern. So now he's playing this by, um, by feel. Because you should never get 2-3 first up like that. You can tell he's not quite sure. Hey Nezor, not doing not doing runs today. This is um, a progression of the Sonic One world record over time. So he got he actually got really lucky there because two three came out twice and he was on the right both times. And the most important trick in the run was performed there as well. Oh, that was actually one fourteen. So, 13.03. And that actually stood as the record for a long time as well. Um, I think at this point you had several other runners. You had Nagleria, you had Timps, who were around that area. I think Nagleria had a 14 and Timps had a 13. Um, but I don't think anyone ever actually matched this run until I did in around early 2015. Um, so I think I think that I beat this run with like a 12.50 or something like that. And I thought, oh wow, I've got the best time now. And I found out that uh, TNT had actually improved this time to what I think was 12.31? 12.30 something. Um, and... Well, whatever this time was, I ended up tying it at one point. And I thought, I'll stop there. I, That's cool, I've got, I've got a tied record. It being a tie means that he probably won't try and beat it again. Um, the... And then I got 12.02. And then this young upstart called Tenebrae decided that you can't you can't just leave it that close to a to a sub minute time we're going to we're going to push it under 12 and he was actually the first one to get under 12 minutes he got 1157 um and then i responded to that with an 1140 and that is what you're going to see right now because i actually have a good quality video of it Alright, next. Uh, why are you so small? We're going to fix that. Alright, there we go. Uh, so this is my 1140. Um, I'm going to enter the splits, but of course, uh, they are exactly the same as the splits that you saw earlier. So, everything is going to be plus zero. Um, again, you'll see that some things have changed a little bit. Um, you'll also notice that I have my own particular way of doing certain things, and each runner of this game does. Uh, you don't have a big body of knowledge on each particular runner through this. You just see their end result, but everyone has their own little idiosyncrasies, particularly in a game like this where you have you know, almost an entire second of leeway in some places. You have a little bit of room to do things your way.
I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying having the music at the right speed again. Oh wow, so I actually did go for this in this run. Huh. Oh, I got the first half of it. So as you can see, by itself, it is not actually a faster way of playing the stage. The thing that makes it faster is the boss fight. Um, you'll see that when we get to Tenebrae's run next. Uh, so remember I said Marble and Starlight 3 were the places to save time. Um, here's Marble for you. So Marble 1, this method was found to just jump straight through that wall because reasons. Like it's not even like a lot of um, other tricks of its kind because you can actually see the wall there. You just you just don't collide with it. A lot of other tricks like that it's more a case of um, the wall not being there and therefore you being able to clip through it. Uh, it slightly failed on my lining up there. I actually used to pause to make sure I got that jump on the right frame. Um, I don't do that anymore. Because the reason, I, the reason I used to have to pause was that I didn't realize that you had to release right. So I would be holding right and jumping on the next frame and it just wouldn't work. Uh, I actually had a different way of getting into this area to most other people. But it didn't, it didn't make a difference, it was just as fast. Um, let's see what my boss method here was. So I would jump over here, get three hits, jump back and get three. Uh, so you see that he doesn't get time to fire his shot on the right hand side so it's slightly faster than getting four and four but it's not quite as fast as what TNT did that being said it wouldn't have saved an extra second so and of course this is why it's in game time or we subtract the time bonus because the difference between 29 and 30 there is significant in real time. <laughs> and in the wrong direction. See if I get this. Hey! Didn't try and bounce off the enemy. I. Uh, that's something I started doing is landing on the 10 ring box in the middle rather than going for that clean jump into the side because if you screwed it up you lost so much time again go straight over the top like that uh, you can actually run across there and you'll land on the platform. You don't have to jump at all, which is a good thing to know. Uh, that there is actually a convenient use of the speed cap. I deliberately kick it in so that I can time that jump. Uh, let's see what happens here. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't even get an attempt at that jump, but I, I saw it early enough that I was like, okay. I can, I can just go down the bottom and I won't lose much time. So I would have been able to get a 30 or a 31 if I got that, that jump right at the end, but instead just went down the bottom for a 32. Uh, Spring Out 3 I think is mostly the same as TNT, aside from the fact that I don't 
uh, quite as quickly. I don't quite as quickly get this jump. See, it takes me a little bit longer to line it up. So you can see, I, I take it a lot safer than most other people across that gap. <laughs> Actually, didn't jump. Uh, it didn't roll on that last jump, which was interesting. Now, I may have seen that Robotnik was moving down and would have been in range. I actually missed that jump. It is it is possible to jump straight past. I, I think I must have just not done it in the right spot. You see that I do that jump slightly differently too. I don't jump out to the left. I just jump straight up. That gives you a little bit of momentum because you have to move back towards the platform. But And also, I rolled there for some reason. I think that may have been to do with having no rings though. <laughs> So 49 is a little bit slower than we've come to expect there now. Uh, I think Labyrinth 2 was clean. See, so jump into the pocket, jump back out. You'll actually see a slight improvement to that method in Tenebrae's run. He saves himself a jump. Uh, Labyrinth 3. Looks largely the same as in all the other runs, actually. Uh, this is what I meant when I said nobody does this quite like me. I jump over that spike ball as it comes around. Uh, gets you a little bit more air. So you have a little bit longer to survive here. And it also... Helps me know that my timing's right. Because if I can do that, then that spike ball's in the right spot. And I've... Um, and I've been playing well up to that point. So let's see how I went on this climb. So I, instead of getting hit by that shot there, I just go behind it. I actually deliberately waste a little bit of time there as well with one of those shots. So that Robotnik doesn't get in my way on the jump later. Lost a little bit of time to getting hit right near the end, but 129 was still quite a good run for the time. Uh, so I think with this one, yeah, so I decided I, I wasn't having any of 
you know, just doing the stage normally. So I had another go at it, and I got that level wrap on the second attempt, which is about as fast as just playing the stage normally. I always found that one really annoying. To get that second go, I was very happy with that. So I got a 15. And at this point, there's not a lot that's difficult from here to the end of the game. Oh, what am I doing? Hang on, back. Oh, I closed the... oh shit. <laughs> okay, uh, we're not worrying about the splits the rest of the way. I actually closed the manual game timer thing. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't make it come back. <laughs> so, so there at the start of Starlight Three, I did my jumps. I timed three jumps at the start of the stage, and then press left at a certain time, and I'll just land on the slope. Uh, this is also the first run I can think of where we go down the bottom path here. It's actually a few seconds quicker. Um, I also, again, I'm using the speed cap deliberately to slow myself down so that I can just drop down into the gap. Okay, uh, so here, this boss fight is slightly different to what Claris and TNT did. I'm trying to get a jump off that there, and what I ended up doing is forcing Robotnik to drop a second um, spike ball on that one on the far right. And that let me get the extra hit instead. Yeah, let's just go forward. Actually. Ah, uh, so the speed cap in Sonic One. Ah, uh, whenever you're running to the right, the game tries to stop you from going faster than regular running speed on flat ground. So if you're traveling faster than that, you actually don't want to hold right at all, you want to hold nothing, or, or down. Uh, so there I actually dodged the caterpillar so that it can't possibly do damage to me. It just, it just means learning a spot to do a particular jump from. Uh, now, if I remember right, my Scrap Rain 2 wasn't very good. So I didn't even go for the fast method here. I went for the slow method. Which I should have been able to get 35 from here, so I wonder what happened. Ah, that's what happened. I was expecting the um I was expecting the spike ball to be in a different spot. And that obviously slows you down here as well. I could have just run under that spike ball and been fine, but once I committed to jumping I had no way of stopping myself from getting hit. Okay, and then this is the new Scrap Brain 3 method. You stand on that, look up, left, right, jump, jump off the ramp, and uh, that actually gives you the slow glitch because the object that you jumped off no longer exists on the screen. And so then you just run up into the ceiling. <laughs> it really is that simple. I'm very glad we have that method because the old one 
uh, used to be a 1 in 6 chance of working at all. The fact that TNT got it first go in his run is just nuts. Um, as, you see, as you can see here, the, the pattern in final zone is different. Uh, nowadays we just run into the... We just hold right from the start and just run into the arena. We remove all the variables. Uh, so now you'll always get this pattern. Um, and if you delay the last hit long enough, you can still get 113. So the extra acceleration from the jump doesn't matter. So that's hit 7. And last one. I didn't even delay it that much, really. No decapitation for me. That was a very high 113, actually. <laughs> uh, Zero Ninja initial RNG plays out based on how you enter the room. After that, you then have to attack the boss in a particular way. So, when you jump at it, when you jump at it, you, um, you have to let go of the directions before you hit the before you hit him. And that ensures that you're only in contact for one frame, and so it only advances the RNG once. So what is essentially supposed to be a random fight becomes com completely consistent when you can do that. Anyway, uh, I'm now going to move on to the coup de grace. It is now time for the undisputed master of this game to take his place at the top. Um, once I fix up the screen size, it's a bit wider than usual I think. Hmm. Okay, uh, hang on a sec. I don't have a good TAS to show off though, that's the thing. Um, yeah, it's a slightly different pitch for some reason. Anyway, here we go. I think it's probably because I downloaded it from YouTube. Um, anyway. Oh, yes it does. Let me fix that. Right in. So, standard 25, that hasn't changed at all. My run actually did get tied at some point. I think it was TNT that tied it. Uh, he then beat it with an 11.32 and then an 11.16. And it was Tenebrae that pushed it down to this. Now, as you can see down the bottom there, my sum of best segments is 1051. This time is a 1053. That gives you an idea of just how good this run is. Now, there are a couple of new things that I didn't do, but his level of execution is just mental. Which you'll see coming up. So... So this one finally comes off correctly.
So that's what an optimal Green Hill 3 looks like now. Good answers. Gee, I thought he was going to get that first go for a second. Got it second instead. That getting hit there cost him a second, it's a bit silly. You can get that as low as 26 if you go through the first go. And then perfect marble 2, because why not? So really up to this point, aside from getting um, uh, Green Hill 3 correctly, there's not actually anything new yet. In the moment, this is just playing better. So he uses that method for the boss fight still. So in theory, if you use TNT's method for the boss fight, there's still a little bit of time to improve here. I don't think it would take you another second down though, so... So Spring Yard 1, I think, is about the same. Except that Tenebrae goes for that smooth entry into the gap at the end and makes it, of course. So a lot of the things that I do as safeties up to this point, he just ignores. He's like, I ain't got time for this. <clears throat> That's a bad miss. If only he'd been playing on PAL and he would have been able to see that he, his angle was wrong. That was, that was an interesting addition there. Did you notice the extra zip? Not for any other reason other than just to cover the ground quicker. And small little things like a roll there to try and get through that gap quicker. 
with your smaller hitbox. Tenebra actually plays that section quite safe as well. Fifty-five there, very strong still. So nice and clean, Labyrinth 1. Again, you'll see Tenebrae do the riskier method where you jump out to the left and then back to the right. You get more momentum that way. Roll through the enemies, jump into this one, so your momentum's going down. All the things that we never really thought were important in the early days. This is the product of over 10 years of building and improving. It's interesting that still nobody has gone for the this. Oh, yeah. So that was so that was uh, Tenebrae's improvement to the route where you land on the on the nearest jutting out platform and then run into the gap rather than doing an extra jump. But it's interesting that nobody is hitting the ceiling next to the um. next to the switch with the 10 ring box on top. Okay, here comes the best part of this or any Sonic 1 run. So taking the hit there means that your um, your countdown timer doesn't actually start until you hit the ground quite some way in the water. That gives you just enough time to get out without taking a bubble at all. Oh yeah, also, it means you have no rings for the entire stage. You literally can't pick up any rings after the point where you take that hit. One twenty-one, absolute balls of steel. And the first try there. For a 16. You see all of a sudden all of this extra time that could be saved against my run is just... It's just dropping super fast. And a first try Starlight 2, which is equally absurd. That one's actually more difficult than any of the other level wraps I find. 
because of the um you have to you have to hold right uh like normally when you do a level wrap you're either holding right the whole time or you let go of it just as you press jump uh with that one you have to hold right for a little bit longer after you press jump but then you have to let it go somewhere in the middle it's pretty difficult to get right i find anyway so uh here we go back to fast starlight 3 um we also have that that same trick comes into play again here on this ramp. Ah, oh, I missed it. You can actually just go straight through this at zip speed. You don't take that hit there at all. And so, so now we're also starting to throw in extra jumps off the seesaws. Those are all frame perfect, by the way. So despite missing that zip there, still 51, which is significantly faster than I've ever done it. This is the one that really makes it though. So it's this method has been known about for a long time. The problem is if you don't get that jump through the um, if you don't get that jump through the shield box, you are stuck. You lose the entire run. To throw that in on top of everything else for the sake of what does this save? Seven seconds. Thirty-four there. <laughs> and a casual doesn't even save any game time. Skip there just for the hell of it. That can actually kill you, you know. Uh, so he gets a bit unlucky there. Only goes across in 12. I don't know, Final Flame, in the context of this game, I'm not sure I call 20 seconds plenty. And so then we see the the same method again. I mean, all I'm saying is, if you want to take on this run, good luck to you. <laughs> In my view, there's this run, and there's um, HDL's Tails run of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Uh, they are the two best Sonic runs that have ever been made. But yeah, 10.53. In fact, 
Hang on a sec. 